Hey guys, this is System, and this is Cave Factory. Hope everyone is well, having a out of the base day. Let's go ahead and jump back into this pretty cool back. Uh, in between episodes, I did a little bit of stuff. I went ahead to the nether, got ourselves that blaze spawner that I kind of saw yesterday. Went and uh, carried that home. Used a comparator on it, just so it makes it so the mobs don't spawn when you put it down right. And then brought it home, stuck it up there, threw a lever on it. It's good to go. So the comparator basically makes it so it reacts to redstone signal. So that's why you want to do that, I guess, before you move it. Because otherwise, if you have to put it down for any reason when you're moving around, it's just going to spawn blazes on you. And that's not a good time. Uh, down here, too. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and grab this real quick. Let's grab you. There you go. Head down here. Because I saw we have an issue, but it's actually a beneficial issue, right? So down here now, we have some cramming going on. Actually, if I do this right now. Oh, it's not happening right this second. But every once in a while, mobs are dying because of cramming. So I want to go ahead and get those items kind of automatically picked up. A way we can do that really easy now is uh, we can go ahead and make these collectors now. So I'm going to go ahead and make one real quick. Let's go ahead and grab you. Go ahead and uh, I guess grab an advanced one because we have blaze powder. Then we'll be able to do some filtering and stuff. Actually, this is a horrible way to do this too. Let's grab some blaze here. And uh, I guess get that processed a better way, which would be the crushing wheel. Because we'll get more out of it. We won't just get two because two sounds like a miserable number when we get a bonus. There you go. We've got 34 out of that. That is... Uh, much better numbers than just uh, what we would have got. Anyway, let's go ahead and actually try grabbing that again. So we want the advanced item collector. Let's grab one of them and grab that right there. That is good. And with this, with the cramming, anytime we got cramming, an item drop in the world because that's what's happening, right? Every once in a while, something just dies. I just go ahead and have it automatically picked up by this chest. And then it'll all end up in here and we'll get the drop. So that actually will work out quite well and uh, be much better than uh, it is currently because... Yeah, sometime I'm getting a bunch. It really seems to be kind of like right on the cusp of crafting. Like, uh, sorry, cramming. There you go, just happened there. And it uh, doesn't happen all the time, but it is happening a fair amount. But anyway, I should do this too, actually. I'm going to go ahead and filter the uh, rotten flush. That way, when the rotten flush kind of comes in, it'll wait till it gets converted first, and we'll get the converted items automatically. We'll end up putting a drawer wall there. I just needed a short-term solution to make sure we grab those items and not have them kind of going in the world. Also, we need some more obsidian stuff, too. Where's that at? Oh, I think my sigil is uh, right here. I did some crafting here. I went and made an item, too. Where's that at? Right here. This is the toolbox. It's from Crate. It's actually really cool. You see there, it just takes, like, a punch to break it. And uh, you kind of go there and hold shift. Retains inventory of contents. Nearby players can hold the, uh, hold the toolbox keybind to access its uh, contents remotely and uh, opens a uh, container interface. So... What this does is basically it's just a kind of like a short range wireless inventory for components from great. So if I go, I guess a little ways here, hit the C key, because that's what I have the hotkey set to. I had to change that and then go a little closer. I can start doing it. So there is a range to it. So it's a little limited, but not too much. How did I bring up this one? What what is this one? I haven't seen this one. Stop tracking. I have no idea. Anyway, that it was weird. Let's pretend that's normal. Let's put that in there. But basically, yeah, it's this wireless kind of connection to your items in your box. And so you can just kind of pick your stuff up, go different slots. You notice that it changes on your inventory bar, kind of showing you that it's from the box as well. Then you just go ahead and put it all the way as well. So that is actually really cool, right? So I could do that, do this, or I could just come here and put them all the way at once. So really, really useful item for, I guess, when you're working with Create, just so you have access to all your materials. Also, I'm not sure why I'm getting saturation right now. I'm actually, I have no clue at all. But I have saturation too. What? Why is that? Why? Why do I have saturation too? I'm not sure why that's happening. <laughs> is it my armor? Is my armor doing something here? I'm not really sure here. You know, we don't have anything that would make me think we would get saturation too. But effectively, I don't have to eat right now, and I don't know why. Okay. So anyway, what we'll do is go ahead and jump to the thing I want to get to here. The thing I want to get to. Is setting up a furnace engine over here. So the furnace engine is an item from Crate, right? So go to here, check that out. Basically, this is a um, mechanism from Crate that produces rotational force using furnaces. You use a furnace or a blast furnace. It has to be actively smelting an item for it to actually produce the force. We have a way around that, and we're going to be using that because we can pretty much make it kind of infinite. And if you use a blast furnace, you get twice the force out of it. I think it's up to like 32,000 uh, stress units. And right now, like, we're only producing, what, 2,500? So we're going to end up using these kind of a lot. So let's go ahead and grab you. That's good. I'll need a year as well. So let's go ahead and put you down real quick. So we just have everything. Let's grab a year. 
probably, uh, we'll just do it like real jank for right now. So maybe something like that. The first one we need to do, there's two parts of it too, but we'll kind of get to it here. That, that, that. If we put them down the right way too, we don't have to do a lot of, uh, I guess, realigning of the direction. But anyway, we'll have to do the bottom ones. Let's go ahead and aim them up. That's good. And the recipe for the first engine is right here. So it just takes the brass sheets, a couple of the brass, brass casing, and a piston. So I think I have everything here. Let's go ahead and grab you. Awesome. And get this done. And actually into proper power for crate, right? So there you go. And then the casing goes in the center. There you go. So that'll craft that one. We also need to go ahead and make this flywheel. So that'll be the next one here. But we need to get this one done first. I think you right click it once it gets to that point too. It just kind of finishes off. Wait, let's get rid of you. Go ahead and pop this here. That'll be the next one we need to do. I think this one is just ingot so, so it's actually not too bad. Just lock so. And then we go ahead, I guess I'd use a casing on that as well. And that should make that one. Is this one actually gonna work? I didn't even line it up. Yeah, it is, okay. The lines were, I guess, working. Anyway, oh, nope, I broke something there. Oh, this one's totally derped. This one is wrong. Let's go ahead and fix you. So come here, go that way. That looks like that one will work there. Yeah, I didn't fix that bottom one. I guess uh, when I changed it around, that's fine. This should work here. And basically that's what happens too if you don't have the arrows going in the right direction where everything will meet up. It just drops all the components of the world. It sees it as a non-valid recipe, right? There we go. We actually have all of it though. So that's good. So this is our furnace engine. We have some other stuff over here we're gonna grab and we're gonna kinda cheese the automation of that. So let's grab you. So that's good. We actually need uh, one more item here too. So let's go ahead and grab some iron. Sweet. We're gonna use a little bit of pneumatic craft here. Just one item. Actually, we'll keep that in nugget form. Let's do, how much of this do I want? Maybe like 36. So I'll kind of show you this. It's a little, it's a little RNG. How much of this um, next material we're gonna get here. So let's go ahead and grab, uh, what would be here? TNT. Let's grab some TNT here. We need to uh, make a explosion really quick. Maybe if I can actually get it kind of up here. That's good. We've got a flint and steel. So the stuff we need to go ahead and make the next item here is going to be this here, a heat pipe. To make the heat pipe, we need compressed iron ingots to make the compressed iron ingots. Before you have the pressure chamber is to take iron, blow it up, and then you get them. But you have 20% uh, loss. So we may not get them all, basically is what I'm trying to say. So I need to do some extras. So I only need 27, but I'm going to do 36 just so we're safe. Uh, let's actually break that so that doesn't break. Hopefully that's far enough from that there. I guess it doesn't matter if the crafters break at all. We just need to make sure we get this material. But basically, we can just take that, throw it on the ground, and then we need to do the explosions, right? So let's do that there. Let's go ahead and grab some stone here as well. Get that right there. Go ahead and see what we got here. Hopefully enough. And we actually got how much? Let's see. Where's it at? Right there. We got 27. So we got exactly what we need. So I'm actually okay with that. I think we had uh, closer to like 25% draw. Sorry, loss. But that is, uh, I guess, enough. To get us going either way so it doesn't matter too much let's do that right there that's good i think for this next part too i need a bunch of wool so let's go ahead and grab some string there was one more component here for this so let's do that drop you off and grab the heat pipe right you need these thermal laggings so let's go ahead and do that and heat pipe there you go now we have everything so we're gonna go and set this up here so we're gonna end up with a furnace engine on this side and this side just so we have power all over our base the way we're gonna power this is gonna be with a what is this called here? The actual blast furnace. So we'll go ahead and put you there. You take this uh, furnace engine, you put it on top, kind of multi-blocks. Then you grab the flywheel. And if you put it here, it's going to multi-block as well. So it connects here. Um, I don't want it on this side, actually. I want it on the other side. Let's do that. Because we kind of determine where the rotational force comes out. So it'll come out this side here when we're done. So that is good. And uh, that is pretty much ready to go. We need to just kind of power it. And the way we're going to power this is a little, little, little jank, a little, little different. It's a little scammy we'll say we're gonna go ahead and use campfire pop that right there grab one of these heat pipes and these heat pipes are from uh pneumatic craft right and basically one of the things they could do is actually heat up furnaces right and make them so they don't require fuel right so i could take this right here it'll start getting heat and this is effectively already automated right so let's go ahead and grab you it will put out the uh fire in time but we're gonna deal with that as well uh let's go ahead and grab two different things it doesn't matter doesn't even matter what we do here. Let's grab one of them and one of them, as long as they're different, because like I said, we're using a loophole. Do this here. It's basically just a weird interaction between vanilla and uh, modded. Why this is gonna work here, but anyway, let's go ahead and throw a copper in here, right? So it's gonna smelt it off for free. 
then you see there it's actually moving. It's producing power now. So it actually started moving after it started smelting. But that's only going to go as long as that's burning, right? The weird interaction is if I put another kind of crushed ore in there, it starts producing heat again. And that's just a vanilla thing. And it doesn't matter if it's vanilla because it won't smelt anything until the item's out. But yeah, this will just kind of keep it going nonstop just because it thinks it has heat, or sorry, power to be able to smelt. And the ticks will never drop. Like the ticks there, you see there, it says the fuel ticks. Goes down a little bit, then goes back up because the heat is pushing it back up. So yeah, it's just a weird interaction there. So basically that is effectively um, nearly infinite, although it will put out the campfire. And uh, the way we're going to deal with that is with a dispenser. Go ahead and grab a dispenser right there. Then we'll put in a flint and steel. I'll come with a hopper and a chest to put a whole bunch of these in here so I don't have to worry about it. And uh, we're going to use a timer as well. The timer reason I'm using this one here is from Project Red. It's a little weird to make. You have to do all the smooth stone stuff. A little bit of crafting. But I like this one just because it's really easy to set up for large amounts of time. So let's go ahead and pop it right there. It has a little spinny wheel. Every time it goes around, it does a tick. It sends a red sound signal, which is fantastic. I'm going to set it to like two minutes because we don't need it super fast. Maybe, yeah, like two minutes, right? Just like so. See there, it starts going super slow. And every two minutes, I'll use the flint and steel. And then if the fire is out, it'll start it up again. And we don't have to worry about it anymore. Like I said, I'll just come back with a hopper and chest, do a whole bunch. And then later on in the pack, I think we even have more solutions than this to automate that thing even easier using RF. But for right now, this is our free and easy option. And I'll just keep that going forever and giving us 32,768 uh, stress units, which is actually really cool. So we got that part done. Anyway, let's go ahead, break you, do that here. We don't really need these anymore. So let's get that out of the way. Next thing we need is going to be, what is that thing called here? A deployer. So we can go ahead and make this here. We want to make the rotational speed controller. Now the rotational speed controller is a really cool item as well. Because basically it lets you take the rotation instead of moving it from gear to gear to gear in one single block up it to whatever amount you want. You really fine tune it, configure it exactly how you want and make sure your machines don't get overstressed and stuff like that and make sure everything's going at the max speed. So we're going to go ahead and make one of these. We're going to go ahead and get that done. Problem is we need one of these precision mechanisms and it has a really weird automation, which we'll automate later on, but we're not going to automate it right now. We're just going to go ahead and make one of them because it's actually really easy. Let's do that. Let me go ahead and drop off some of this stuff though because my inventory is totally clogged. Let's do that. And uh, what else do we need here? We need uh, sandpaper. I'm pretty sure I don't have any paper yet. So let's do, nope, that is totally wrong. Can I get uh, one of them? There you go. Drop that off, get ourselves a sandpaper. Awesome, this is gonna get us uh, the electron tube. So I think this goes in our offhand, this in our main. Right click, get yourself a polished rose quartz. Then with that, we'll be able to make a electron tube. Awesome. Then we need to make the brass hand. And then we need to make the actual deployer. Uh, we don't have any cogs, all my cogs are in here, aren't they? Go ahead and put you down. Let's see if we hunt down two of those. That looks good. And uh, we should be good all around. There you go. So basically this is a user. This thing's a user. So you go ponder on this one. You can basically use it to poke things, right? Poke things. And then there's another one, a fist. The fist I think is for like weapons and stuff, right? Okay, now that we have the deployer, uh, we can probably just go ahead and hook this up right here. But let's put it right here. That cog doesn't need to be there, but this is very temporary. Well, we're going to automate this later on anyway. I guess it doesn't matter. We need to turn the right way though. You going you to turn the right way for me? There we go. That is the right way. We'll also need a depot, so let's actually go ahead and grab that. But before we do that, let's get this out of my hand, because that'll drive me crazy. Go ahead and grab a depot. Awesome. We got one of them. And like I said, we're not going to automate this right now, because I really don't see a point. Uh, we also need a hopper. Later on, we'll need to auto automate it, right? But for right now, we literally just need one of these. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and pop you here. Go ahead and grab ourselves the depot. Just lock them. And then, why is that set to the fist mode right now? thought why why are you on fist i thought fist doesn't fist disable i think that's what the fist does i can't remember what the fist does actually i have to go to ponder and actually check that out i forget what the fist setting does but i want it on the point setting there you go although i have it set wrong now do that do that there you go awesome so it's actually doing exactly what we want there we already need a piece of gold because that, that is part of the recipe let's go ahead and grab a piece of gold just like this 
And we'll go ahead and drop this stuff off real quick because I need some room in our inventory. That's good. We're gonna grab ourselves five small cog wheels because that's what we need. Then we also have, I guess, five large cog wheels. So that'll be another thing we need. And then I think we need nuggets as well. So this uh, recipe has a chance of failure as well. And uh, it's not fun when it happens, but it can happen to you. Just to be aware of. Don't know why they have it that way. It's kind of a horrible mechanic as far as I'm concerned. But uh, something we need to deal with either way. Never a fan of uh, recipes with fails. But anyway, so basically we're going to have that there. That's going to do that. To go ahead and set up our kind of little recipe here. Like I said, we're doing it real jank now because I just want to make one. This will make it so we can do it uh, pretty smoothly. So the way you make this thing, you look at it here. You basically, usually we'd have three deployers, right? And then each one would do a step. But basically you have to add a cogwheel to the plate, then a large cogwheel, then a nugget. Then you have to do that times five times and see there it has a precision mechanism, 8% chance. I think that means 20% chance of failure is what that's saying right there. So yeah, that's kind of how it works. So the way we're going to do it is this here. I'll just drop that there. Sweet. It's already done the first cycle. See there it has a little bar. You see it's about a fifth done. Progress 3 of 15. It's kind of telling you what has to go next. So yeah, pretty cool and uh, pretty easy to do. But we could just do it this way and then not have to worry about uh, setting up two more of these right now. Just kind of hammer it out and get it done. It really doesn't take that long anyway. So we'll fully automate this later on. I just want to get our, uh, I guess, ore. It's ore set up first. Ores are really what we need to get going, right? Automated ores. Anyway, it looks like we actually got it, right? So that's good there. We've got our precision mechanism. Then we could go ahead and actually grab ourselves the rotational speed controller, hopefully. There you go. That's good. Let's uh, bring this thing in case we need it. There you go. And uh, get this thing hooked up. So, get this thing hooked up. It doesn't have to be on this. It could be like on any cog, right? I think it has to be a large cog is the only thing. Let's go ahead and grab you. Yeah, I don't think a small one works, right? I want to try a small one. I don't think this connects to it. Yeah, that definitely does work. Let's go ahead and get you out of there. Kind of multi-blocks when it works, actually. So you'll be able to know right away. Yeah, let's go ahead and pop you here. There you go. Kind of multi-blocks. It does the thing. This one here is like a normal speed. Don't worry about that one. That one's like the base speed that's coming out of here. But that is an extra line. To actually get the rotational force out of it, the good stuff is down here. So there's one down here, one connection down here. So that's cool. And if you look at the front of it, kind of like this, and then you can see there it says speed RPM. We can ramp this up. So if I put that up to 28, that's going to spin a little faster. Go ahead and put it up to 256, which is the max. That is insane. So that's spinning 256 times per minute. So this is going to be the way we kind of are able to control our shafts and all our gears and all our automations are going to be going down this line to be going at max speed. And uh, we are pretty much ready to go. So anyway, that is good. We've got ourselves our furnace engine automated as well as our... Uh, Guess we got our rotational speed controller. So I'll go ahead and dig out another room here and then we'll come back and uh, probably start getting to, what would be the next part? Oh yeah, we need to start uh, getting stone, automated stone. Once we have automated stone, we can start doing our crushing and getting uh, free resources. So I'm just going ahead and uh, making us a little more obsidian here. I want to go ahead and make this here. It's a crafting room out. I think it'll give us wireless access to our storage system. So we're gonna do that. It was actually easy to go ahead and make all the components. I had to make another uh, storage network group. Then the sea lanterns, you can actually get the shards just with the water crafting with the quartz. Then the other one here, which was the crystals, right? That was just with lapis, right? So got that really easy. Already got the four sea lanterns. So we actually have everything. Looks like we just need one more. Then we're going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, start automating stone. That is the next part of this. And once we have that, we can start, uh, I guess, start grinding it down and stuff, right? Wait, wait, let's go ahead and uh, see if we get this done here. That should be good. So the remote should be this year. We needed a ender chest. Let's go ahead and grab you. You grab the ender chest. And actually, how much gold do we have left? We're probably pretty low on gold. We got one block there. I guess we're okay. We're fine. We're okay. <laughs> we'll pretend. I think it's worth it. There you go. Grab this thing. Awesome. And then I think you take it and just shift and right click it on this, right? And then, yeah, we just have wireless access to our inventory now, which is awesome. I don't think this one could be used as a bobble though, can it? Oh, don't throw it on the ground like that. That's uh, probably not a good idea. But yeah, now we have wireless access to our inventory, which is uh, actually really good. Okay, so now that we've taken care of that, let's go ahead and grab the rest of this. I went ahead and made these here. These are mechanical drills. So these are gonna be used to, I guess, break stone, basically. It's gonna be stone and cobblestone because it's a little random. The way we're gonna produce the stones could be like this here. Go to cobblestone generating, click on that there. 
when you actually just set up a uh, cobblestone generator in this pack, you have to 50% chance of stone and 50% chance of cobblestone. So we have to kind of deal with that. We'll be able to do nether materials later on too, once we have blue ice, which actually isn't that far. Once I have uh, some RF, I can make us blue ice really easy actually. Uh, what we need to do though, is set up some cobblestone generators. So just trying to figure out how I want to do this. So I'd probably have that there, then maybe a wall, then we'll probably start here. Let's do that, there you go. Probably something like this here. Probably set up like five of these two. So we'll run the water down here, I guess. That looks good. Awesome. And then we'll need two spots for our lava as well. So let's kind of just open that up. Then we'll just kind of get this fully set up here really easily. And then hopefully get it uh, all automated. I'll come back later too and uh, wire, I guess, make this stuff all pretty too. Just a little more tidy. But for right now, I just want to kind of get it in place. So there you go. We got our water. And then we can just go ahead and add lava. Sweet and right there as well there you go see there we're getting some cobble we're getting some uh stone as well we only got one a little bad rng but it is 50 50. then with these we should be able to just go ahead and do something like this here let's go ahead and pop them on top and then we want to go ahead and probably rotate them too because they're not in the right direction right now uh that that i need to i need to flip these around there you go sweet so it'll end up being something like that there then we just need to go ahead and move the rotational force uh, so it's on the top, right? So what we'll do is uh, figure that out real quick. Let's go ahead and throw down our toolbox. Sweet. Do that. Oh, that is definitely not what I want to do. Let's actually break you. Sweet. We're also going to have to pick up the items too, and I figured for short term at least. We may do this long term too. We'll grab another advanced collector and stuff, because I don't want this stuff just dropping in the world. I'm just going to do that and that. If you go here, you can actually go to show the range. There you go. Actually, I need it one larger, I guess. So is it this one? Yeah, that'll actually cover the whole area, I suppose. And uh, that should be good there. Go ahead and uh, take that away. And uh, yeah, we need to get the force in here, right? So let's go ahead and put you down. Let's go ahead and grab some shafts. We may need some gearboxes as well, I guess. So let's do this. And yeah, gearbox, right? That should be good. So like I said, we're going to bring the force out this way. We'll probably slow this down too uh, for now until we have the whole setup. Because I don't want to drop tons of, I guess, uh, things into our world. But at the same time, this is actually okay for right now. Do that. It's here. Awesome. I come back and put casings on these two if I want to hide them. Although it's not that important. Let's do the U. Sweet. Go ahead and uh, probably using case drives on top because why not? It actually make it really easy and tidy. And I'll actually have one way over there because I'll end up moving the rotational force along the path down further, right? So maybe something like that there. That looks good. And then we should be able to just rotate this stuff, right? So we do that, 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 and that. There you go. That's going to start automating that process. And in here, uh, once I pick up this stuff, we're going to start getting our, I guess, our iron, all our different materials, right? We're getting all our different stones. And uh, everything's coming in just uh, really quickly, actually. It's going to produce very quick because we have this thing set to go very quick. Uh, like I said, I'll probably slow it down right now because I don't want the chest to kind of get uh, all backed up and build up. Because it'll actually happen very quickly, I think. So we'll just uh, make it go slow for now. There you go. Nice and slow. Look at that. Nice and slow. Give me time to set up the rest. Get it kind of all sorted here. But we'll end up having to have a way to separate, I guess, all these materials, right? So we need uh, all the ones. I guess I'll let it run a little faster than this and get make sure we get every drop, right? But uh, all this stuff's going to have to go to one place. And all our cobblestone and stuff's going to have to go to another. That's basically what I'm kind of thinking here. So, yeah, we'll have to do some kind of sorting here. I guess I could do something I could do. I, I haven't really thought about it yet. I could have a drawer wall. Maybe I'll do that, actually, because that would make the sorting really easy. A drawer wall with a controller to pull all the cobblestone into it. Kind of take that out of the system there, right? Because that'll be a thing, right? Because I'll probably want to keep that separate. Then I can decide what I'm going to do with that stuff later on. And then all this other stuff, right? So all this stuff down here go into a different chest, and I can pull that somewhere else. That way you can just keep everything kind of broken up really easy. And yeah, maybe maybe that's the play. What is the uh, drawer controller in this? I haven't actually looked what it was yet. We want to make a drawer controller. That's actually really easy. So maybe I'll go ahead and dig out a little more area, get that kind of set up here, and uh, grab us a drawer controller. And uh, I don't remember if we connect this directly to a drawer controller. I guess we'll find out here in a couple minutes. So I'm going to hit and set up a little drawer wall here. I guess I have 11 drawers that we can filter here. A drawer controller, which is basically the, the brain of the multi-block. We need to go ahead and accept our rewards here. Also saw we're going to get a compact machine, which we'll use at some point, maybe for the tree farm, because that'll be uh, laggy, right? 
Oh, a factory hopper too. I actually like these hoppers. You can actually make them quite quick. Wand of Symmetry. I don't even know what that is. There's our shrinky device. So anyway, that's cool. Go ahead and get this stuff out of here. What book's that? Oh, that's the pneumatic craft. Okay, we don't need that right now either. What did I need? I did the uh, door key. There you go. With this, we can just right click on that. It's gonna add a little padlock, so we'll be able to manually filter it. So otherwise it's gonna be a pain. That way we don't have to worry about it. Let's do that and that. Just have these here too, because uh, we're gonna end up, uh, I guess we're winding down all the materials down here at some point. So I just kind of get it lined up and uh, kind of thinking about how it's gonna get uh, kind of done, right? Did I do that right? Did I do, what did I do wrong there? I guess, yes, we did it right there. Go ahead and, oh, we need this here. There you go. The wood was uh, the piece that was left out too long. But basically what we're gonna do, I think, is just grab all our uh, different types of cobblestone out, right? So we'll grab you, all the stuff here, maybe that as well. And if I start putting it uh, in these drawers, it should start automatically, uh, kind of going in here as it comes into the system. Then we don't have to worry about it anymore. So yeah, that'll just keep it all filtered and uh, keep it separate from everything else. Then moving forward, we can go ahead and process everything else that's coming in. Then maybe do a, another setup, I guess, in a bit. Maybe probably in the next episode or future episode where we'll pull this cobblestone out and either turn it into sand. We'll need one to do sand and then we'll need another setup probably to do glass as well. So we're going to need all those materials kind of automated as we move forward, right? So I guess that would be something we have to do at some point. But for right now, this actually works. So I think that's all the cobblestones, right? Let's see here. Anything else? Oh, no, we also have granite. This is the last one. So I actually made the exact amount of drawers too. And I, I thought I actually made too many. That actually works out. So what is there? Six, seven, eight. There's 11 different items that come out of there. So now we just have the ores in here now. So we'll end up being able to set up a belt that's moving down this way and then going into the crushing wheels. I just need to kind of figure out how I'm going to lay it out here. Everything else gets, uh, everything he's getting picked up by this as well. Also change the shape of this too a little. So it's just kind of doing the exact area it needs to. So yeah, it's a weird, long kind of tubular kind of, I guess, uh, set up there, but it's just a little more compact and if I drop something out here now, it doesn't get automatically picked up uh, by the hopper. So that's working out. But yeah, this thing's actually working quite good. I'm actually probably pretty much safe to, I guess, speed this up a little bit. I will need some void upgrades and stuff uh, for the drawers. But I'm going to have to make a whole bunch of obsidian for that. The void upgrade for the drawers, they're not too bad. They are where they at? They are right here. There you go. But each one's going to take eight obsidian. And the obsidian casts off super slow. So I'm going to just going to... Uh, have to get a whole bunch of LP, kind of get that done. But you can see now we're actually getting the resources at a really good pace. So not too bad at all. This is actually pretty solid. I think this is fast enough too. As long as this is fast enough to keep up too, I guess is the other thing. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I guess the next thing is to get a belt and uh, get this stuff going into a crushing wheel. So I guess the next part of this will be to get the actual crushing wheel set up, right? So I'm thinking something like this here. We'll probably end up having this little channel. There'll be a belt along here. Then we'll have like crushing wheel. Then a crushing wheel, right? Then it'll come down and get a crush, get spit out. And from that point, we'll have to do our sorting. And then we'll probably make it take the turn and start coming back where it'll do the, I guess, ore washing and the, I guess, some smelting as well. If we end up doing the uh, sand and the glass here or somewhere else. I haven't really decided on that yet. But anyway, I think this will work here. I did move a, I guess, some rotational force down across here. So I have a vertical gearbox here. Should be able to grab a belt. Kind of figure out how the, we're going to do this. Probably end up making a turn here, actually. So let's do this. There we go. Do this here. And just see if we can actually get these kind of wired up the way I want. Actually, I'm going to have to have a way to power these, too. <laughs> How am I going to do that? What's the easiest way I do that? Uh, think of it. Because I need to have them going in opposite directions. So I may need some extra shafts in here. Let's uh, put a couple in, <laughs> just in case. I don't think it matters if you put more. I don't think they take force themselves. But I want to make sure I have some in here. Just in case if I need to move the force, uh, I can do it really easily. So maybe something like that there. And that's good. Then we go ahead and drag that all the way down to this one. Cover that. And I'm pretty sure these ones still move, right? Yeah, they still spin as well. Okay, cool. So this one here, let's go ahead and make this uh, thing of a bob. Uh, this is moving the right way. The really, I guess the big thing right now is this moving the right way. Let's go ahead and grab here. Do you or do I have to flip the force somehow? This one is grinding the correct way, which means this one's going to grind the wrong way, right? Let's kind of check that out real quick. Do that. Do this. I think this one will be going the opposite direction it needs to. Uh, I guess we need to make that one vertical as well. Let's go ahead and grab you. And that one is going... Actually, wait. 
Is that actually, are they both going the right way? Oh no, that's perfect. That's right, right? Let's try a piece of cobblestone here. Why does that work? For some reason in my head, I thought they'd be going the uh, wrong way. But if that actually works out, that's stupendous. Oh, you're grabbing everything. Stop that. <laughs> I want to test something. We'll end up having a andesite funnel or something here. Um, or not, a, uh, I guess a brass funnel or something to bring these things out. But I guess I need this off for a second. Let's do that. Sweet, just so we can throw something on here. Uh, let's go grab some cobble. That's good. Go ahead and throw this here. Make sure this is actually working because this oak should get spit out as gravel out the other side. And that's exactly what we want. Also, I need to test one more thing. Um, I guess we could do it right here. Oh, not there. Right here. I need to make sure this collector is going to pick things up when it's on the belt. Because I'm not actually sure if it's going to or not. So if I bring this down here really quick, right? Do that. Go ahead and grab you here. No. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, we don't have to worry about that. So we can actually <laughs> get this stuff back to right here. We'll have to find our filter because I don't know where it went. But uh, that is fine. And everything is good now. Yeah, we're good, man. Where did my filter go, though? Yeah, there you go. Just uh, that's one of those things with those uh, cables there. Every time you break connection, you just got to kind of deal with it flopping your filter around like a wounded walrus. But anyway, that is definitely something. And uh, that should work there. So we have it at least lined up. We have it lined up. And I guess the next part, that will grind everything down. I'll probably end up uh, putting at least a buffer chest there right now and getting this kind of covered up here. But that works. And then I guess we'll go ahead and make our... Uh, whoa, what did I just get? I got blank eyes. What are blank eyes, man? Let's check this out. Here, blank eyes. I can look at Enderman. That's actually a really cool one. Huh, that's actually neat. But yeah, we need a funnel, right? Let's go ahead and grab a funnel. I think a brass one. So I went ahead and got this uh, kind of finished up here. I have it moving at max speed to kind of see how it's going. You see here it's going at 1,024 SEO, which is the max speed for these here to get overloaded at that point. I think these ones are at 2,000, right? But basically they're moving at 256 RPM, right? So that's kind of the idea. See everything's coming down. Uh, as it comes in, it pretty much gets instantly crushed. It's getting all filtered too. So all the, oh, let's not do that. <laughs> there you go. All the emeralds, the diamonds, the redstone, the lapis, the coal, and the, I guess the secondary uh, cobblestone is ending up in here. Then everything that's, uh, I guess, getting going to end up getting washed later on is ending up here. And we're actually getting stuff at a really good pace. And I'm going to show you how I set the filters here, just so you can see what I did. There you go. And maybe the funnels as well. Anyway, that's much quieter. I'll end up having to mute some of that. But anyway, in here, I have a filter. This is the funnel, right? So when you put it down, it just connects to the inventory, right? So that's the way that works. One thing I'm not sure about, I need to go look at it. You have this function where it does that. I don't know what that's for. I'm not sure that. I'm just, I just leave it. I've never used it that way. I've only ever used it this way. So I have to see what that is. I didn't look at the ponder. But anyway, the uh, brass funnel here, the has a slot here for a filter. So that's them there. That should be pretty easy to make. And if you right click with them, you can kind of see here, you have this little kind of interface. It's a little confusing at first, but it says add reference item. So I can put in something like cobblestone, highlight it, then I can choose any one of these options to filter that particular item, right? So I'd be able to filter cobblestone with any of those tags. What I did was just put a ore in, so I actually use this copper ore, and set it to forge ore. So basically it's just saying, if you're a forge ore, you could be pulled out of there, right? So that's the way that works. Don't tell me we're already maxed out of cobblestone. <laughs> we're already maxed out of cobblestone. I need a void upgrade already. I'll worry about that in a couple minutes, but anyway. Also I had to make sure this turned to quarter too so i have it here so had a gearbox and a gearbox and another shaft here because otherwise compare if i just use one gearbox in the corner it's going to make it run backwards so i use two then i also have this here the other brass funnel this is the second one let's do the other filtering this one was a little more complicated because we had several items so I had to have one for cool that's the is for uh furnace fuel then i had to have one for gems so i had to put a diamond in here and i had gems that takes out the diamonds and the emeralds one for redstone and then one for cobblestone. Some of them let you pull out the exact item, some don't. I'm not sure how that works, but either way, that's all filtered and ends up up, up at here. And I guess in the next episode, we'll end up taking this stuff here and then doing the washing and then figure out what we're gonna do with the smelting with our cobblestones and maybe the seared bricks, maybe we'll smelt that stuff off too. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else. I don't think anything else we really need to kind of handle at this moment, but uh, for right now, this is actually working really well, and it, it's going really fast. It's not too bad for a first gen, you know what I mean? Actually, this is probably good for the pack. That's the way I see it, actually. 
Uh, the only thing we need to do actually is mix in, um, there's a different form of cobblestone for basalt. That's going to get us the resources from the nether. But once we have that in here as well, which I'll probably just swap one out, we'll have pretty much everything. So yeah, it's looking pretty good here. It's basically what I'm saying. And everything's flying along at a pretty good pace here. Like, look at it, man. It's, it, it's doing a thing. <laughs> Not too bad at all. And it's going at mock speed. I have this part way faster than it needs to be. I may throw in another rotational speed controller and speed it down um, just for lag sake, right? Because, I mean, this is going way faster than it probably needs to. Like, I, I just fly along here, right? So, anyway, that's the thing. Also, when you do this one, too, you can set the directions on them when they're touching an inventory like this. So you need to wrench it and make sure that little arrow there is going the right way because it'll either take things out of the drawer controller or put it in. But this way, it's pulling it directly into the drawer controller then putting it in the appropriate drawers, right? So I need to lock this, I guess. Although it doesn't matter. It's so filtered. I don't need to lock it, but I should lock it, right? Anyway, that is good. And everything's great. And uh, outside of not having, uh, I guess, a void upgrade, we're uh, looking pretty good here. So quite happy with this. Also, out of nowhere, like last episode, no fish were in here. Now I have fish in there constantly. I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, did I do? Yeah, I did a bunch of this, right? I want to go ahead and actually make that one void upgrade just so this is functional or it's going to shut down uh, sooner than later, right? There you go. Let's go ahead and actually grab a void upgrade. That looks good there. Awesome and awesome. I'm going to have to make a bunch more of these for probably um, pretty much all the cobblestone ones, right? All the different drawers almost right away. But basically if I do this now, that cobblestone should get voided off. There you go. All the excess stuff is just gone. I don't have to worry about it filling up our buffer chest. So that is cool. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end this one here. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.